Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. This time we're going back to Chicago, Checker Records, Chess Records, 1966, Little Milton, the best version of I Feel So Bad. In fact, a lot of people, they might think it's his song. It was really Chuck Willis and then Elvis did it in the rumba way, the way Chuck Willis did it. But Little Milton really remade it in such a way that it's kind of the, that's the reason this song survives today. And you can hear a million bar bands playing this song. Otis Rush has a great version. Jimmy Dawkins has a great version. I've played this song a million times. And the rhythm guitar, not just on this song, but on the whole record, Little Milton Sings Big Blues, which, you know, if you haven't heard that, you really got to just drop what you're doing and listen to it like eight times in a row every day. Um, the rhythm guitar by Phil Upchurch is amazing. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time on the rhythm guitar. And really, I could do a whole lesson just on all the cool chords he plays and, and like Reconsider Baby. There's one song on that record where Phil Upchurch takes a wicked solo. But mostly it's Little Milton playing just awesome lead. So anyway, let's. Uh, this is an E flat. So I'm going to... I got a kind of a lighter pick and we're having try to have a real relaxed style. You've got this chord here. So this is just a C chord. And then you make it a C seventh. And then you move it up so your first finger's on the fourth fret of the B string. So this is a movable shape. This is the same chord that's in tramp in Tina Nina New. It's a real nice chord to move around. So that. You're trying to use your second and third finger on the 15th G string, 14th B string. This is not that mysterious. It's just like if you're playing hideaway and you go, it's that little part of a V shape. But in case you're not familiar with it, if you're all the way up here playing an E, it's E flat on the 11th fret here. Then use these two fingers, slide into it. Get the second, the first finger behind it on the D on the D string. You don't have to play it, but it's good to block it out because you don't really want to just pick the exact strings only. Then it doesn't really swing and it doesn't have that groove like if you just sort of strum a little more loosely. So this was, and then you can use all three strings or you can do, it's probably mostly usually just the G and B strings on the 13 and 13. And then you got your first finger ready to go because you use these two fingers up here. First finger's ready to go 11th fret on G, B, and E strings, and then hammer on. Second finger, 12th fret. 2nd finger, 12th fret. So, and you're not quite done yet. Then just put the 3rd finger down again. It doesn't end up being this. It's... It sort of ends on, on the uh, a mini 4 chord in the middle of the 1 chord to sort of lead you to the next one. It's not like stop, stop. It's... One is leading into the next one with this four chord. That four in the middle of the one over the one note, I just played an E flat in the low E string to illustrate my point. Kind of says, okay, what's happening next? We're gonna do it again. I hope that made sense. All right, and then first time he goes to the A flat four chord, which is just your E seventh shape, all the way up to the fourth fret with your first finger. There's a, he actually plays a 13th, and I love it when this happens on records. You can see guys still feeling their way into the part. This is a 13th, but he only does this the first time around. He plays the five as a 13th and the four as a 13th. It's a hip chord, so this is fourth fret, D string, fifth fret, G string, sixth fret. But, you know, then later on he changed his mind and simplified his part. You see that a lot. Like, uh, 
in Blue and Lonesome when Freddie Robinson is doing this. And then right in the middle he goes, he plays a minor seventh and then you can almost, I can almost hear him think, oh, that was too complicated. He goes back to the most simple basic chord. So just like that moment, he plays a 13th and then later on he just plays just a this or maybe this. So a typical A7 bar chord or this way with your pinky on the ninth fret of the B string. But the this is an interesting chord because he was a real slick guitar player with really slick chords throughout this whole record. I'm talking about Phil Upchurch. So anyway, let's try. I'm going to loop the rhythm part, see how it goes. So while this rhythm part is going around, um, go ahead and try uh, playing along to it. You know, I would just sort of say the words and then put in your fills because solo has a different rhythm. Oh, bad. Feel like a ball game on a rainy day. You know, have some fun. So here it comes. Two, three, four. enjoyed playing along to it. Of course, I forgot something really important. There's always a break every time um, on the four. You could play just the A flat seventh with your pinky out on the ninth fret. So, and that's where you do the punchline for the vocals or you do the real good guitar lick. And we'll get to that. But anyway, let's go to the rhythm guitar part on the solo because that is just killer. I love it. It's just a real heavy down stroke on the two and four with a little chicka ba chicka ba chicka ba chicka ba ba ba. He doesn't do the chicka all the time. You can do it all down. I guess that's the best way. So that's two ways to do it. It's, I can really picture the go-go dancers, you know, 1966. But let's try all downstrokes. See how I'm doing this? I'm kind of squeezing the ball here to control it. So it's like click, whack. I have fun playing a solo over this. Two, three. Oh. It's a 
real cool rhythm guitar part. It just fits in so well, pushes it along so well. Simple chords. You could even go. Practice that. And then once you get a hang of that. And which brings me to the ending of the song. I'm going to leave here. It's just a little bit. It's just extemporizing and soloing. Doing that. Sometimes you'll hit the G and B strings together. And during that part, just stay on the one. I'm going to leave here. Anyway, I love that. I love it. So now let's talk about some of the... Uh, fills and solos and things. So um, just try to really relax. He's not really reinventing the wheel. It just sounds so great. One of my favorite licks on the solo, I'm talking about Little Milt now, of course. Oh. It, this is just, if you're in E flat, that's the 11th fret. You do a tug there. This uh, is just like the rhythm guitar part where you go, where you end up with your third finger on the 13th fret of the G and B strings. Third finger, 13th fret, 11th fret, 13th fret. And he does. Yeah, I love it, man. He just has a way of just walking through it, you know? That's this. You bend with your third finger, 13th fret. And then 11, 11. Reach out with your third finger on the 14th fret B string. So you have. And then he does a bend. I would pick one and vibrato that and not vibrato the other one. So you could, I'm doing right now a bend with my third finger on the 14th fret of the E string. I got my second finger behind it. He has a lot more vibrato than most players. He's like Otis Rush without so much of the agony, you know? Just... But he really vibratos a lot. Like, he vibratos a lot. Eddie Clearwater vibratos a lot. Especially on his fills. Be like, feel so bad. Just those good notes. That's a 14th fret B string move up. And then 13th fret G string. And try to sound like you're walking. Lots of rolls. Let's try it. Here we go. All right, here we go. Fret bend. I bumped it to the G string there. to really put the good stuff in there and then put the nice rhythmic stuff in. 
<laughs> that fits great over the four. And over the one, you can just bend onto the one like this. And there's something Little Milton does all the time, a kind of a BB thing. But he really has his own way of doing, doing it. All right. that and he'll even bend that up a step and a half he doesn't do it on this song but he does it in um hey hey the blues is all right which is uh, my other lesson about little milton hope you'll check that one out so anyway have fun with this song such a little milton um I'm crazy about the way he plays blues. I'm crazy about his singing. He was just an amazing artist. And uh, I love this song, love this record. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. Join me on Patreon for weekly guitar chats and to help support these free lessons. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell your friends. Thanks a lot. See you next time.